Hi, this is Mr. Gianelli with your technology tip of the week, and today I'm going to be talking to you about keyboard shortcuts. These are um, some things that you can do on the keyboard that are going to make your life a lot easier, and also something that I would recommend that you teach your students when they're using the computers. So I'll start off uh, with some simple ones. Control A is a select all. So I have another Word document here open, and if you do a Control A, you've now selected the entire document. So now you can easily change the size of the words, the font, formatting stuff, anything you want. Um, I think I've shown you in the past, if you double click on a word, it selects it. If you triple click on a paragraph, it'll select the entire paragraph. And again, a control A will select the entire document. The next is uh, copy, cut, and paste. Control C, control X, and control V. When you copy something, let's say I copy the word Dorothy here, I do a control C. This is now on my clipboard. The clipboard is something that you can't see, but it's an invisible thing that's holding your uh, copied words. So now I paste it with a control V, and I can paste it again and again, and I can put it here and here and here. It doesn't matter as many times as I want to. It's still going to be on the um, clipboard until I replace it with something else. A control X does basically the same thing, except for it removes the part that you send to the clipboard. So if I highlight this uh, sentence and I do a control X it's now removed that sentence but I can now paste it with a control V here or here or even back here as many times as I want as long as I don't replace the clipboard it's gonna stay there so that's again control C to copy control X to cut and control V to paste the next one is print control P a really quick way to pull up your print dialog you don't have to worry about navigating through the menus if you're on the internet that can be really useful because I don't I always hate trying to find out where the, the print dialog is when whatever program I'm using it's just as simple as a control P um, the next one is save that's a control s so there you go I just saved my document and if it's a new document it'll ask you to name it before it saves Otherwise, it will just replace the current one. Uh, control F is a find, and let's say that I am looking for the word um, mighty. Type in mighty up here into your navigation dialog with uh, a control F again to pull that up, and it'll find all the instances of the word mighty. There's only one in this uh, particular case. When I go on the internet, sometimes that's really useful if I'm looking for, you know, through a Wikipedia article and I want to find, um, you know, something about a very specific topic, I can just type in some keywords and find it there. I just typed in funny and I found uh, there's one instance of it in this document. When students sometimes plagiarize, let's say that it's obvious that something that they wrote comes from, um, you know, something off the internet at least it seems like it if you have that suspicion what you can do is you can copy so I'm just gonna do it I'll do a control C to copy go on the internet Internet Explorer and do a paste so control V and just do a Google search for it and uh, let's see I go to this document and now I'm gonna do my control F my find function and again a control V to paste and boom, there it is. My students have been caught. They obviously took a sentence right out of this. And uh, it's just an easy way for you to figure that out. And I've used that in the past. Um, so when you get good at it, you know, it's, it's just, it seems magical to students. They're, they don't, they're, you're just like, okay, let's see what, you, uh, what you've been doing. And you bring it on the internet. You quickly find the document. You quickly do a control F and a control V. And in a matter of, what, 10 seconds, you, you can see if they were plagiarizing. Um, another thing that kind of goes along with the control F, the find, is the replace, control H. And let's say that I want to replace the word Dorothy. I want to change the name of her character to Jennifer. So I'm now going to replace Dorothy with Jennifer. So let's, uh, let's find the first one instance. There's Dorothy right there. And now I click replace. And now, she, well, you can see it. Let's try this one. Dorothy has now become Jennifer. If I do a replace all, all 18 instances of Dorothy have now been replaced to Jennifer. So we just rewrote The Wizard of Oz. And even if this was a thousand word document, you could easily change the name of a character or whatever by doing the control H change function or replace function. 
Control I, Control B, and Control U are bold italics and underline. And that's just a simple way to italicize with a control I, underline with a control U, and bold with a control B. If you go push it again, it'll go the other direction. It'll undo the bold italics or whatever. You can do more than one. You can do all three of them if you want to one word. Just control B, control I, and control U. A new document is a control N. And if you're on the internet, that will open up a new window. And yeah, okay. The uh, next thing is Control Z and Control Y, which are undo and redo. So if you make a mistake, I'm sure you've learned this before. Oops, Control Z, and it's back. It goes back in time to whatever you did. But let's say that I'm typing some stuff and I'm, I'm writing some beautiful poetry, like. And I say, oh, you know what? I don't really like this line. So let me just control Z. It. Oh, but it's taking too long. So I'm going to hold it down. And, oh, shoot. I went back too far. You went back in time too far and you lost some important stuff. Well, what you can do is control Y to go forward in time. So again, control Z backwards, control Y forwards. And in some programs, instead of control Y, it's actually shift control Z, which makes things confusing. But most programs are going to use control Y. Um, control plus scroll wheel is zooming in and out. Now the scroll wheel is this thing on top of your mouse that spins and that moves the um, document up and down. But what's really cool about it that most people don't know is if you hold down control while you use it, you can zoom in and out which is a really easy way to navigate. Uh, when I'm projecting something for students and I need, they can't see it, I just zoom in and out using control and the, the mouse wheel. Also, just kind of a side note, if you're on the internet, F11, you'll go full screen. So if you want to make it look nice and clean and really big for the students, again, F11 will do that. Last one is my favorite. I use it all the time. And I've been using it this entire uh, presentation, Alt-Tab, which is to switch windows. So if I'm in this window and I want to go back to my other one, Alt-Tab. It's just uh, push them at the same time. Alt first and then just tap tab and let go. And you go back and forth. But let's say you want to go to the internet. You don't have to use scroll down here with the mouse. I mean, you can. It doesn't take that much time. But another easy way is just Alt-Tab until you see the internet appear. And then there you go. And now when I Alt-Tab, it goes back to the previous window that I was at. If I want to go back to the shortcut keys, I'll just Alt-Tab again until I find it. And there it is. So it's just a really fast way to navigate without having to use your mouse to find it. Um, and I, I use it all the time. Hopefully you found some of these useful and uh, I encourage you to print this out and stick it up somewhere that you can just kind of be reminded. Once you get the hang of these, it really makes life a lot easier. And teach them to your students. All right. Thanks for watching.